Hello and welcome to the last part of this walkthrough. In this part, I'm going to show you how I spice things up a little bit to finish up the project. The first thing I did was create a confetti shower using a particle system. So I created these confetti strips, which was going to be used for the particle instances. Now I created a strip by first using curves for their profile. Next, I extruded the profile by heading over to the object data properties and increase the value for the extrude parameter. To use a strip with a particle system, I needed to convert it from a curve to a mesh. Since the confetti strips were going to rotate as they fall, I had to recenter their origin using origin to geometry. Now you can have fun creating as many curves as possible for this. And if you want more curves apart from the default ones, you can use the add curve extra objects add-on. Next, I created an emitter for the confetti by adding a circle mesh. I filled it up with phases by going to the edit mode and using the F shortcut key. I wanted the confettis to fall from the top, so I moved the emitter up on the Z axis to about 2 meters. Now, to prevent the confetti strips from passing through the balloon, I moved the emitter in front of the balloon and reduced the scale on the Y axis. I wanted the confetti to cover the entire scene, so I scaled up the emitter on the X axis. Finally, I applied scale to reset it to zero. Next, I added the particle system for the emitter. I made sure it was selected and headed over to the particle properties and added a particle system. I set the particle instance to the confetti strips by first heading to the render section and setting the render as parameter to collection. Next, I headed over to the collection subsection and selected the collection for the confetti strips. I enabled the pick random option to emit the confetti strips randomly, otherwise they will be emitted in a predictable manner. Next, I wanted to preview the particle systems. So I first went to the emission section and reduced the number of particles to 200 and set the end frame to 1320. Then I increased the lifetime to a value of 250. So after previewing, I realized the confetti strips were too small. So I went to the render section and increased the scale to 1.5. I also wanted a random variation in the size. So I set the scale random parameter to 0.5. After another preview, I realized the confetti particles were falling too fast. I reduced the normal speed in the velocity section to 0.1, but that did not help much. I soon realized that this was because much of the speed was coming from gravity. So I went to the field width section and reduced gravity to 0.01. I previewed the animation and realized the confetti moved up before falling. This was because the normal for the emitter was facing up. So I rotated the emitter 180 degrees along the X axis. Next, I wanted some random variation for the speed of the confetti. So I headed over to the velocity section and set the randomized value to 0.075. I also went to the force section under the physics section and set the drag value to one for a more realistic result. Next, I wanted to randomize the orientation of the confetti strips. So I went to the rotation section and enabled it. I also set the randomized parameter to one and set the random phase parameter to 2. Next, I wanted the confetti strips to rotate as they move, so I enabled the dynamic option, and in the angular velocity, I set the axis to random, and the amount parameter to 4. I then set the number of particles to 250, and played the simulation to check it out. Although it was looking quite good, I wanted to add some drag and turbulence to it. So I added a drag force field, and in the physics property, I set the linear drag to zero, and reduced the quadratic value to 0.6. I also set the noise amount to one. Next, I added a turbulence force field, and in the physics properties, I lowered the strength to 0.250, and set the noise parameter to 0.5. I then selected both force fields, and moved them to a new collection. Next, I made sure the particle systems will only be affected by force fields in the collection I just created. I did this by heading over to the field width section and set the effector collection to the collection for the force fields. Next, I wanted the particle system to start early so that the seal will be filled with confetti right from the beginning. 
so I set the start parameter to minus 500. Finally, I wanted some confetti falling behind the balloon to add some more depth to it. So I went to the top view and duplicated the emitter and placed it at the back of the balloon. Now, even though I was now having two emitters, their particle systems refer to the same particle settings. Therefore, they behave the same way and this is not what I wanted. So I changed the seed value for the duplicated particle system. Then for each particle system, I added a cache making sure they had different names. I also made sure that this cache was enabled. Then I went ahead to bake the simulation. After baking, I checked it out and was quite happy with the result. Okay, after I added the confetti, it was time to prepare for a draft render. So I changed to the camera view and set the viewport shading to render view. Next, I made sure the emitter for the confetti was not visible for rendering by selecting the emitter and heading over to particle settings, then to the render section and ensuring the show emitter parameter was not enabled. Next, I wanted to add depth of field to the scene. So I selected the current camera, which apparently was in the wrong collection. So I move it out to the correct collection. Then under the object data properties, I enable depth of field and set the focus object to the balloon. Next, I wanted some bloom in the scene. So I headed over to the render settings and enabled bloom. After playing around with the values, I settled on 1.5 for the threshold and 3.2 for the radius. I also made sure screen space reflections and motion blur were enabled. After a test render, I didn't like the look of the motion blur on the confetti. So I kept increasing the step value until I was satisfied with the value of four. Next, I increased the quality for volumetric rendering so I reduced the volumetric tile to 4 pixels and increased the samples to 128. Finally, I wanted the scene to be a bit brighter. So I selected the key light and increased it to 600 watts. I also selected the fill light and increased it to 400 watts. Next, I went to the render properties and set the render sampling to 128. Then I went to the output properties and set the output location for the final render. I wanted to render an image sequence, so I chose an image file type. I chose Targa because it gives a good balance between quality and size. Lastly, I made sure the frame start and end parameters were correct and finally rendered the animation. After the render was complete, it was time to create a video file from the image sequence and add some background music using the video editor in Blender. Since I did not want to make changes to the file output settings for the current project, I decided to create a new project for editing and creating the video. Next, I selected a video editor workspace and adjusted the end frame to 1320 to cover the entire length of the video. I also set the frame rate to 60 FPS to match the frame rate I used for the animation. I then added the image sequence for the rendered animation and made sure it started at frame zero. Next, I added a sound strip and selected the background music file for it. Next, I went to the time section and experimented with the start parameter to find a good starting position for the background music that matches with the animation. I also adjusted the duration parameter to match the length of the animation. Now I wanted the volume of the song to fade out. So I set a keyframe for the volume attribute under the sound section close towards the end. Then at frame 1320, I set the volume to zero and set a keyframe for it. Then under the output properties, I set the location and file name for the final video file. I then set the file format to FFmpeg and also set the container type to MPEG4. Lastly, I set the audio codec to AAC under the audio section. Then I rendered the video file. So this is the final rendering. Thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel. Share and like this video. 
I am working on an introduction course for Blender, which will include an exciting tutorial to build an animated happy birthday cake greetings video. So subscribe to be notified when I release it.